All right, welcome everybody to the stream. For anyone that's watching this on playback, feel free to skip ahead. Because while I'm live, I'm going to wait for a few people to get on here and then I'm going to unpackage this. So if you're watching this on the playback, feel free to feel free to join in or skip ahead. Skip ahead to when I actually unbox it. So you're not sitting here for a few minutes waiting me waiting for me to unbox the package. As for now, for everybody else here that's watching the stream as I'm live right now, welcome to the stream. We got Ben on here, Conrail Productions. Hey, how you doing? I forgot you changed your channel name, but I did see your community post. Good to see you. I'm glad you found me on my main channel. That's why I always tell people on the, you know, on the, uh, uh, on the train stuff, do follow me on my main channel too, because that's where I do a majority of the live streams and stuff. So, um, that's good. Ben, do me a favor, go in my server if you would, and send out the link. Tell everyone I'm live if you would, just in case, uh, Anyone else wants to join? Let's see who all we got on here. We got Ben, Chiron Productions, Sean, Mitten State Productions. Good to see you. Lightning Hayden, good to see you as well. Yes, you changed your name. Elvira Rockon's mom, great to see you as always. And we're only, we're not even two minutes in the stream and we already have seven people on here. It's showing me, so that's awesome. It's not letting you? You can't, just ping it, ping it in general or something then. Or videos, that's fine. I don't care. Just uh, send a link out. That's fine with me. We're going to unbox something here tonight for a little bit. And we'll talk a little bit as well. Um, daylight savings just happened. I'm a little behind on the video. I'm going to finish it up tonight, most likely. I'm going to finish up the clock video, and I'm going to get that posted. I am going to do a video of changing all the clocks back an hour. Actually, a lot, actually, all the clocks in the other room right now, all the ones that are in there are not running because I've been too lazy to actually wind them. So I'm going to get them all running tonight, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a video of changing all the clocks back. I didn't really have time to do it on uh, Daylight Savings. I wasn't feeling the best either since I got a flu shot on Saturday, so I was trying to recover from that. So we'll do that. My rail fan on Saturday? Yeah. I will be actually out and about on Saturday rail fanning. Um, I won't say where, but I'll tell you, I'll, all I'm going to say is I'm going to be riding Amtrak to get to the location. James, since I have a Bova, uh, yes. Yeah, that is, that, that's a cool clock. And you have a Seco QXH004BLH wall clock. Oh, nice. It's pretty cool. Davin, great to see you as always. Thanks for coming on. Holly Sub, yeah. The Holly Sub, I mean, it's good when it gets, you know, the day we got the sand train in X491, that definitely helps, especially the north part of the Holly Sub that only gets four trains a day. So y'all can complain about it being dead in Royal Oak. Don't complain unless you are like BB uh, trains and lives up in uh, Holly and, the, you know, that area around where the uh, Holly Sub only gets, you know, the four big trains, 507, 508, E251, and Q116. So there's some train talk for you. Um, <laughs> train talk, see what I did there? Good friend of mine, actually. Uh, train talk production, subscribe to him if you haven't. <laughs> good friend of mine. Uh, good to see you, Graham. Good to see you on here. Metro, good to see you as well. We got 10 people on here. And you're gonna be rail fanning tomorrow. Yeah. All right, I say we give it about one more minute. We'll unbox it. It's an elevator part. If you didn't see the, uh, description it is an elevator part so for all my elevator enthusiasts comment your guesses because i know you guys are gonna like this part i saw this and uh i said you know what i've been working hard lately i haven't gotten any new parts in a while i'm actually starting to run out of room but eventually when i get my own place in the future i will hopefully be able to have more room well i will because i'll make sure that that happens your middle name is James as well. I don't remember if you have told me. Maybe you did. I'm not sure, though. Uh, I know they're rock on. His mom says, back from walk, booting, computer. Ah. <laughs> Tess and Grub? No. It's a little cooler than Tess and Grub. You're going to go and catch 176. Yeah. I've caught 176 only a few times. I've I caught it once when it was running very early on the Sterling. It ran at, like, I'm going to say around 7, no, I think it was like 6.45 or 7 p.m. 
uh, he caught NS-176. And it, it was very strange for that to be running at that time because, you know, typically that train does a lot of work um, around the North Yard as well and uh, in Oakwood Yard as well before they eventually take uh, the Sterling up to uh, the Sterling Yard. A lot of train talk tonight. Got a lot of rail fans on here, so appreciate everyone as always. This is why I have multiple hobbies. You know, this is why I know so many people because I like to get into more things than just elevators. You know, a lot of a lot of great people I meet in the rail fan community as well. So, all right, I've kept you all waiting long enough. Let's open it up. They actually use staples on this thing, so hopefully I don't. Yeah, those staples are sharp, so I'm actually going to pull them out because I don't want to slip my hand under there and uh, <laughs> myself, you know? That would not be good. Okay, come on, get out of there. There we go. Seller actually packaged this up really well. There was um, plastic on the outside of it, but I, I took it off just because it had all the personal information. So I already took all that stuff off just because... Uh, Private info. I don't want you guys knowing all that. All right, there we go. Let me just see. I don't see any sheets. Yeah, there's actually a little plastic right here. There we go. I pretty much, like I said, I pretty much took all that off. But um, all right, should be able to. There we go. Bend this down. see what we got here i recently uh got something on the sterling secondary it was ns218 it was an as needed one of those as needed auto rack trains and the uh conductor threw to me uh one of those tags that they have saying that the cab has been you know sanitized clean and all that good stuff and it's got up logo on it it was pretty cool because it was a union pacific locomotive leading it um uh, and obviously, you know, Union Pacific maintains their locomotives. So that was pretty cool. Well, you can already see part of it right there. If I take that off, does that give you guys a hint at what we're looking at? Do you know where it originally came? I have no idea. Yeah, ben knows it. The alarm, the alarm bell might give it away. I can't even push it. <laughs> Got stuck. <laughs> all right. If I take all that off, that's what we're looking at. For all the uh, elevator enthusiasts out there, you know this as Otis Black Button. It's an Otis Black Button fixture. These have been on a handful of Otis Black Buttons. We have quite a few of them here in Michigan. And when I saw this, I was like, this is a nice panel. It is heavy, though, let me just say. Let me just say how heavy this is. But it is an Otis, vintage Otis elevator panel. You got the uh, uh, four buttons up here. You got the fan. And a broken emergency stop. Because that's supposed to push in, and then, yeah. I might have to open this thing up. I might have to unscrew it and then go in there and fix it because that definitely is a problem. And then down here, we actually have the up and down controls and we have this button right here. This key switch says auto and then ATT. It stands for auto and attendant. Attendant, what attendant does, it allows an attendant to go in to the panel and pretty much, you know, sir, you know, use the elevator as if like you have an operator. So an operator says, hey, you want to, which floor do you want to go to? You want to go to three? You press three, hold door close button, and uh, it sends the elevator up. You also got up, down buttons as well. Fire service, DO for door open. This panel definitely is going to need a little help, I can tell, because uh, um, some of the buttons don't really press too well, unfortunately. The floors press pretty well, though, which is good. Um... Unfortunately, these Otis buttons are built to last. Otis black button, actually, Brian. Lexan would have uh, a little uh, yellow, uh, orange 
a halo light around it. These are black button fixtures, a little bit older than Lexan, so these are really neat. Great, great fixture though. Like I said, I saw that and I was like, you know what? I've been working kind of hard. Kind of would like to have a panel like this in my collection. Of course, it's funny. Pretty much all the panels I have are all the ones are pretty much stuff I bought. I don't really have much stuff that I've gotten um, from uh, modernizations. Was actually, you know what? Real quick, guys, I do. I should probably show you guys some parts I did recently get earlier this year from a modernization. So I'm gonna slide this over. I'm gonna go get them real quick. I'm gonna feature them at some point because there's gonna be a video coming up. So we'll be right back. Hold on one second. So I happened to be out filming at a college and I happened to run into the technicians while they were looking to start modernizing the elevator. So I talked to them and I was able to get some parts. I only got the call buttons and an indicator, unfortunately. I didn't get a COP. I, was, I wanted the COP because it had some nice older innovation fixtures on it, but unfortunately did not happen. Um, so, oh, hey, Brecovator, good to see you. Speaking, so we already talked about earlier, Comrail Productions changed his name. Brecken, uh, um, if Brecken will probably tell you guys a story about how he got his name. I kind of came up with that. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, this is uh, what we just unboxed. Otis Black Button, very nice panel. Going to need a little help. Like I said, the emergency stop, the spring is broken, the alarm bell... I don't know why it's getting stuck like that, but it is. This is even moving around too. This bottom, this bottom panel, see? So we need kind of need to get a screw on that, but like I said, who knows how long I'm gonna have to do that. So anyway, what I did want to show you guys, I did get some parts recently earlier this year. I never have I never showed them. There'll be a video on it uh, coming up soon, actually, because the mod I think just got done. So I'm going to go up and check on it, and I can do the final uh, part to it. But let's take a look. We got a call button here. That's what it sounds like. Guesses what this part is? What do you think this is? Imagine when you nick nickname Otis Black Buns, Otis Railroad Lights Button. Hmm. Ben is right. Innovation. It is innovation. What kind of innovation are we looking at here, though? Probably the most common one, right? Okay. I'll show it here in two seconds. This, These parts, though, I actually did get from a mod. This black button, though, unfortunately... Uh, well, not unfortunately. I ended up buying that. Um, but most of the time, I like... Uh, I, I try now, especially nowadays, try and get parts from actual mods, so... Whenever I spot places that are uh, starting to modernize their elvers, or the elvers are going to eventually get ripped out, I'm going to do what I can to get parts. But you're right. It is universal. This came from a college. This actually, These parts came from, I was doing some filming around Oakland University, which is in Auburn Hills. And Schindler was doing uh, the mods there. They were redoing the whole building. The whole building was getting renovated. And they were also redoing the elevators. And... This was for, if you guys have seen uh, TKE's video, TKE fan um, did have, has filmed the elevators at Varner Hall at Oakland University. That's where these uh, call buttons came from. Varner Hall on the small elevator. There's two elevators. There's the big one and there's the small one. This came from the small one. So we got two of these innovation parts. The technician wanted to keep some of the parts for himself because, you know, he likes to wired them up and, you know, collect them as well. So um, he was still nice enough to give me 
uh, these two buttons. And he was nice enough to give me this vintage uh, GAL lantern that was also inside the elevator car, which, uh, which is amazing. So, uh, actually, I can't actually, no, I think the original lantern, there, there is one original lantern that I believe is still inside the elevator. Um, but it does, it's non-functional either that or it, um, it got removed. I can't remember at the moment, but this actually, now that I think about it, came from the outside of the elevator. They had this, they had one of the, one of these on the inside and then every floor also had one on the outside, but pretty much this is just a standard GAL floor indicator and it would light up, uh, the floor with the arrow as well. I'll get the flashlight real quick. So we can kind of make it functional just because we can. The elevator is going up. Here we are at five. We're going down. Two, one, and then the down. And there's the down arrow. So you can kind of see that in action. We got those uh, parts earlier this year. The video is going to come out soon. I want to release it uh, soon just because the mod recently got done i believe so i need to go out and do a finished take so i'm gonna do that for you guys so that's a sneak peek of something else that's coming up got a small trip coming up too as well guys midnight rail fanning uh will be uh most likely included uh for this small trip and it's not going to be here in michigan it's going to be out of state stay tuned for that that's coming up soon too uh stay tuned uh midnight rail fanning streams now take place on Royal King of the Rails. I did my last one on Halloween on this channel. Going to move it all over to uh, Royal King of the Rails now. Brian says, also James, what you, why do you call Montgomery Coney with the Universal uh, MX? MX is not the buttons. The buttons are universal on those. Are you talking about the ones at uh, Atrium of Novi that I just posted? Because MX is the model, and MX refers to in ground hydraulic the pistons in the ground uh as opposed to hh which is holus hydraulic where they put the uh hydraulic ram jack on the side of the elevator so they don't have to drill a hole in the ground so pretty much mx is in ground hh is holus hydraulic <clears throat> so it was nice for the uh like i said the elevator technician to spare me a couple parts because i asked him uh i asked him are you guys modernizing the elevators and he said yep I'm like, oh, okay, okay, cool. And I told him, you know, about, told him about the interest, you know, about uh, the uh, elevator parts, you know, and, uh, you know, how I like to collect them and how I like filming elevators around the state. So here we are. We got these three parts, like I said, and then we unboxed this one that I recently just bought. Uh, it was not, it was not cheap. I'll tell you that. It definitely was not, but um, I think it was worth it for the collection. Just because it's nice to have a few parts. So here's the back, by the way. There's the contact back here. A couple sharp things there, so you gotta watch out. And then you got Insta Mount, as you can see. Tells you all the uh, info you need to know. Insta Mount. Oldsmore, Florida. Ben, you know where that is? Oldsmore, Florida? Since you're from Florida. But yeah, one more time with these. The sneak peek of these buttons, these will these will reappear in the modernization video when I do the before and after. And I do have a during, I have a couple clips of it during the mod, so I'm going to throw those into the thing as well. Door open looks like it was replaced. These are all the original buttons. These ones... Are a little different. This one definitely has a replacement. And then, oh, there we go. I just didn't pull it up hard enough. That's why. Okay, so the emergency stop does work, but it is kind of loose in there, as you can see. Because see, now it's set. Now I can push it. And the alarm button sticks for some reason. We also have key switch for the light right there as well. Like I said, we do have a handful of these nice uh, black button elevators around Michigan. I've actually filmed quite a few. Uh, I just haven't posted any of the videos yet. Because I have, I filmed three, there's two in Royal Oak, one in Huntington Woods, and I've also filmed uh, some black buttons at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. So, I have quite a few uh, videos yet to come up. 
Damon, good to see you as well. I did see a comment. I meant to acknowledge that, but I didn't. Bernard, good to see you as well. Chain hydraulic? What do you mean by chain hydraulic? Jane, cubic creator. James, I've seen on some elevators before on the call button right above it. It has a key. It says priority service. So priority service. Good question. Um, let me run and get a part real quick. I have a priority service key switch. I will go get that. Priority service. Priority service is kind of like independent service and fire service. But what it does is it recalls the elevator. It's actually, if anything, a better comparison would be code blue service. If you know what code blue service is. Code blue service is a feature you see in hospitals. And it's pretty much used um, to recall the elevators whenever someone important needs to use it. I have this right here. This was actually given to me by an Otis technician. Uh, once I, I had to, I had the pleasure to meet up with an Otis technician because he said he was going to be doing an inspection on an elevator. So I got to watch him do that. So pretty much what you you'd see this mounted on the call station, and I got my keys right here. Uh, I think this takes a UTD if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see here. So I have to take my keys. That's UTH, UTF, UTF does fire service, UTE, and okay, it's gonna be right here. This right here is UTD. Now remember, use keys with permission or on your own panels. In this case, I'm using it on my own panel, my own part. So what I can do is I stick the key in pretty much. Flip it the other way. So I'd put it in, I turn it to on, and at that point, if it has an, a priority service light, the light would turn on and it would recall the elevator. Pretty much priority service, it's like code blue. It recalls the elevator, so anyone that is authorized and important can use the elevator. So code, it's like, like I said, it's like code blue. It recalls the elevator. Uh, Service personnel can use it if they need to use the elevator immediately for an emergency or anything like that. And then they get inside the elevator. And then I don't know if, I don't think there's another key switch inside. I think what it does is it just calls it, you know, and allows, you know, I, I can't remember, like I said, if there's any uh, uh, function to it. I've seen priority service key switches a few times. I know there's a hotel in uh, Moab, Utah, that I filmed that it's on my channel that has um, that has that uh, feature. So it does, uh, it, you know, it serves its purpose, you know, for people that need it. But you know, is it too common to see? Uh, not really. So that's what priority service does, pretty much. Um, so yeah, glad I could answer your question on that. Let's see. Gotta love the flint. So let's see. Oh, yeah, no problem, Damon. Yeah, Damon and I were on a call earlier today uh, as he was driving, and I decided, I was like, you know what, I'll look at the ATCS monitor for you, which is uh, a tracker system for trains, because uh, Damon was driving along the Flint sub, and I told him, like, hey, you got two trains coming, so boom, got them. And you got the two BNSFs on E251, which was pretty cool. So, yeah, anything besides Milwaukee what? Milwaukee Junction ain't that bad. Damon and I have actually rail fanned around Milwaukee Junction uh, quite a bit. Michigan rail fan enthusiast. Hey, how you doing? It, actually, if anything, it's it's nice because I got an extra hour of sleep. Um, but yeah, it does get darker earlier in the in the evening. But I like it that it does that because then it means in the morning it gets it's it gets brighter earlier, which is good. Um. I see a code blue HID reader painted blue at Gainesville Medical Center, Gainesville, Florida. Gainesville, I am, I am uh, 
thinking about going to. Um, so I'm just going to spill the beans on this a little bit, guys. Next year, there's a good chance I'll be going to Florida uh, sometime next year. I'm not going to say when uh, for my next vacation trip. And uh, since I'll be 21 next year, I'm going to have no problem booking hotels. Because right now, the str I've booked hotels in the past, but, you know, the struggle to find a hotel that allows 18-year-olds to and up to book can be kind of difficult. Because, you know, I've filmed, I filmed them before, you know, and uh, I filmed them. So, and Jeez, I cannot speak tonight. Excuse me. I've booked hotels before, but, you know, the, limit, the limited amount of hotels that allow 18-year-olds um, and up to book is, you know, it, there's, there's not many hotels that allow you to do that, but, uh, it is possible. I've done it before. Um, cause like I said, mo majority of hotels, you gotta be 21, which that'll be no problem next year. And me going to Florida next year, uh, will be kind of more so a solo independent trip for me. It'll be one where I kind of start to get away from the parents a little bit and, uh, kind of go off on my own a little bit. Um, the pl I have plans to go to, I, I would like to go to Gainesville and a couple other places, especially since I am, I, I would like to go to Gainesville since that's where the University of Florida is, which University of Florida, I'm a pretty big fan of that college. It's pretty nice. Um, I like to do some filming around there. College towns, there's going to be tons of elevators, probably some trains as well. That'll be on my list to do as well. Um, but yeah, there, and I'm thinking I might return to Fort Myers again because uh, Fort Myers was pretty cool in that area. I'd like to go back there. So just th spilling the beans on that, that that's going to be uh, coming up. Now let's go look back at the chat. Brecken says, by the way, Kone text came to my school today and confirmed modernization day. Oh, really? So, okay. All right. Well, try to get the parts if you can, hopefully. Uh, Detroit Area Real Fan says, so what has Jamie been up to before the stream? Well, been editing videos. I took the day off work today because I worked a very long day on Tuesday over, let's see, I worked, started at 6 a.m. and got done at 11, so about a 17-hour day on Tuesday. And worked on Wednesday, so I figured I needed to take a day off this week, so here we are today with today off. So, Alex, how are you doing? Good to see you. What kind of elevator key uh, does work for lockouts on an old Otis? I have no idea. I don't even have keys to this. So, yeah. Brian says, hey, James, want to know something funny? All right, go ahead. Why not come to your area? I'm going to come to your area. Uh, I plan to. That uh, That's the plan is for me to meet up with you next year. Assuming I can, I'm going to come to your area because uh, I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to film some stuff in your area. Obviously, you got to film trains in Plant City where you're always at half the time. That way you can show me where you rail fan. Then someday, got to get you up here to Michigan. Take you to Wyandotte. Great, great places to rail fan too as well. Fort Myers. Grandparents live there. Oh, nice. Uh, I tell you, um, uh, Fort Myers, it's it's a nice area. That, I, that If you guys remember, I posted some content from Fort Myers uh I think it was it was earlier this year I posted content because I was I was there last year, and uh, yeah, bro, I think it's time for a new part. Two. Yeah, I do. I am gonna do. Um, I, I need to do a part two or at some point. It's been it's been a while. Like I said, most of my parts unfortunately are not in the best um, spots, as were my clocks, or that's why I pretty much bring everything into here. But I'll try to make it happen. Eventually, someday in the future, when I have my own place or an apartment or something like that, it'll be a lot easier for me to do a show-off with everything because that's why I don't do clock videos as much because I have to get everything set up in a spot as in the future I'd like to have it all in a spot where I can just go because the area that I have them in right now is just too messy. So, And I'm not going to be able to do that. So uh, will I be able to get... Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Concerned about getting uh, keys for the for these yet, but at some point I will. <laughs> Excuse me, I'd like to. All right, well, I'll be right back. I'm gonna mute for one second.
All right, I'm back about that. Sorry about that. One of my, uh, one of the people that lives here just got home, so I didn't want any interruptions. Uh, anyway, for now, we'll talk for about another five minutes. I'm going to end the stream because I got videos to edit. I'm going to see if I can get that uh, darn clock video done, turn all the clocks back an hour and starting everything up because, like I said, I haven't really turned anything back. I haven't wowed the clocks in a while. I just... I've been too lazy to do it because half time I get home and I'm editing videos and I'm going to bed. And sometimes I just want a little fun to myself too. So sometimes you know, I kind of do my own thing. But we'll talk for a little bit longer, guys, if you want. Then I'm going to be getting out of here um, for a night. KFC for dinner. I I do like KFC, but sorry to hear that about the, the disappointment. I think I wanted to wait till almost 12.30 for lunch. That made me miss E800. Michigan Rail Fan Enthusiast says, VR is making bad places to set rail. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it takes a couple of years to even get a rail, rail camera promise. Yeah, literally, a, like, like I've said, I put in, I filled out the form because I'd like them to put cameras in Michigan. Virtual Rail Fan. If Virtual Rail Fan was listening to me right now, why no cameras in Michigan? We got tons of good places to Rail Fan. Delray Junction in Detroit would be perfect because although it's not the safest area, it would be nice for Rail Fans that would like to see trains go through there, be able to watch them somewhere. Romulus, great location for Rail Cam. Romulus Diamond, easily a prime spot. You got Canadian Pacific, Kansas City, Southern Trains, CSX, NS. You got four, or no, no, that's three, sorry. I, obviously, I can't count. You got three really big railroad companies that run through there. That's pretty cool if you think about it. And, uh, you know, the train traffic there isn't too high. It's maybe about 25 a day at most. It's still trains, though, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, even Wyandotte with the quads, with the quad tracks would be a great location. Uh, there's four there's four tracks there, about the same action as uh, as Romulus. Maybe a little uh, maybe a little more action. Maybe closer to twenty five to thirty, depending on what runs that day. It depends if there's any as needed or anything like that, because um, as needed trains do tend to run. And that's uh, Down River is the one area that definitely gets the most as needed trains uh, out of all the lines. So that's for sure. Milwaukee Junction, well, Milwaukee Junction, the thing about the cameras in Milwaukee Junction, there's not really a good place to catch all the action at Milwaukee Junction. You kind of have to drive. It's like, it's kind of like Monroe where you have to drive from CSX a mile east to go to NS and CN. It wouldn't be a good spot because there's no good spot where trains are always, uh, you know, passing through in the same area. So, yeah, that, that's just my take. That's just my take on that. Um, Plymouth would be good. There is a camera. You can download the Plymouth Trains app. Farmer Street actually does get it, but unfortunately the camera's kind of... It's one of those stupid picture cameras where uh, it updates like a frame every five seconds. It'll show a picture of what's going through. But the app actually does allow you to... It, does, it supposedly can send notifications whenever a train is blocking the crossing like whenever a trains going through so that's kind of cool that they uh have that Plymouth there's an abandoned Stella's trackside restaurant oh is that that is that that restaurant is it abandoned when did it when it was it abandoned I know I know where it is because I've seen it uh, a couple times you know because you know there's always anytime there's a restaurant by railroad tracks it's there's always you know a play on words or something to do with trains so priority service I'll take that out of there now but yeah that's the priority service key switch from earlier if anyone has any other questions about that feel free to ask we're going to be getting off here pretty soon because like i said i gotta i gotta go film that stupid clock video so that way you guys have content to see in terms of that because i haven't done a clock video in forever they moved it like eight months ago, and they haven't done anything with it since. Ah, that would make sense. So the restaurant's probably just sitting there uh, wasting away at this point. That sucks. Well, maybe someone will uh, buy it and turn it into something else. 
Maybe maybe we could uh, maybe we could turn it into a rail fan lounge. We should definitely do that. There is actually that one uh, by the ice cream place in Plymouth, uh, Plymouth Depot or whatever it is. Um, they're gonna turn that into a rail fan lounge, I believe, which would be awesome if they did. Been to two rail cam from Cordial, Georgia. Yeah, I've been to a few as well. I've been to a couple places with rail cams. Durand, Railstream has cameras in Durand. Um, I've also been to, I've been to Northwood, Ohio, Death Shore and Fostoria that have, uh, virtual rail fan, uh, cameras. So I've been, I've been to a lot of places in Ohio. I've been, I've only caught one train in Death Shore though. Cause that was the one time where I figured I'd check out Death Shore in the evening. That's what I did. I've been to Fostoria many times this year. I've been there at least three, four days total though. Cause I went for a day with Damon. Then I did a two day trip. And then I did another day as well. Uh, so, yeah. Yep. That was when we went for railroad days or rail fest back in uh, July, June. No, no, no. What am I thinking? September it was, I believe. Um, that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Fly How could I forget Flagstaff? That's right. I forgot Flagstaff. There was a camera there, too, that I've been to. And technically, technically, I mean, there's no there's no virtual rail fan cam, but someone did have a camera in downtown San Diego of the MTS trolleys. BNSF runs a few freight trains on the San Diego subdivision, uh, typically at night, about two to four a day, typically uh, two northbounds uh, in the uh, early evening, like around seven, nine o'clock. And then they send about two southbounds after that, typically around midnight. Not a busy line, but I got to, I asked my parents if we could go out there one evening and, uh, Sure enough, I was able to get one freight. So that was pretty cool. That that goes down as the first official BNSF uh, line I filmed. Because, yes, I've seen a ton of BNSF locomotives here in Michigan. But I have um, I have uh, filmed uh, quite a few BNSFs when I was in Flagstaff. And, uh, like I said, I got one train in uh, San Diego as well, downtown San Diego, which was pretty cool. But yeah, I should put a camera at nine mile. Nah, no one wants. The thing is, Brody, not many people really want to watch uh, yard action. More rail fans do not like just watching trains go back and forth, work in the yard. People like for me, I don't like slow trains. I like seeing trains that are actively moving quickly through a crossing. Road trains, you could say, if you will. Um, those are the ones I like the most. Mohammed Sonic Boom, good to see you. I'm doing great. How are you doing tonight? Did I? Yeah, I didn't really film many elevators when I was in Flagstaff. I was only passing through to get up to the Grand Canyon and then when I was going back down to Scottsdale. Um, so I, I only got like three elevator videos and I got like 12 trains. So 11 or 12. And one of the trains I got, I only got one going up there and pretty much I got the first train right as I got up there. Uh, we had like three Ferromax units on the, on the one train. So Flagstaff is actually a pretty cool location. But what's cool about Flagstaff is they actually get snow up there. So you can get good snow shots. But then you go south to Phoenix and, uh, you know, areas like that. Scottsdale, it gets hot. I actually wonder what the temperature is there. Because when I was there, I was there in June. I was there in June earlier this year. And pretty much every day in June... It got in, it was in the nineties. It was in it was the desert, you know, the desert land out there. It was in the nineties pretty much throughout the day. We got up to a hundred a few days. I remember uh walking around the resort. I walked to another hotel within short walking distance. It's like it was because there was one other hotel and there was a top golf as well. But that's like the only two places I was really able to walk to because they were the only two close places. Plus it was hot as heck out there. Uh, in the desert land, and you know, honestly, I can hand, I can pretty much handle any kind of weather. I mean, I've stood outside in hot uh, weather for rail fanning, very hot weather, and I've also stood out in very, very cold weather, as cold as the teens for rail fanning. One time, I was in Battle Creek rail fanning. It was in the teens. I took my glove off for one second so I could uh, push record on my phone and zoom into something, and I put my glove back on. I felt my hand started hurting because of how cold it was. So. I've kind of, uh, you know, I've kind of been through it all, honestly, if you think about it. I've been in the really hot. I've rail fanned in weather as hot as uh, 100 degrees. And I've rail fanned in weather as cold as 9 degrees, maybe a little colder. So, yes, I've done it. 
cold weather, I the cold weather, when it's cold like that, you know, I get used to it. Some of it I can't stand, especially in the in the teens, you know, like that, or even a little lower than that. But I'll tell you, when we when I rail fanned in Duran that one night, I was pretty warm for the most part, and it was it was in the high twenties that night when I did Halloween rail fanning out there with the snow. Because uh, on Halloween, we got a lot of snow up in Duran. That was amazing. I, I couldn't believe how much snow we were getting. I mean, it's like, holy crap. Might as well start bringing out the Christmas shots, too, you know, with all the snow uh, coming down. So that was that was, that was pretty cool. That was definitely a memorable day. I'm glad I – and for the record, I got up for that on Halloween. I got up at 4 a.m. that day, got to Durand at 6, and then left at 1 a.m. the next day. That was a long day. Good thing I took the day off the next day as well because I went to bed after I got home. I went to bed, I'm going to say, after a little after 2.30. I had to do a couple things. And then I woke up the next day at 3 p.m. So I got like 13 hours of sleep because uh, of how long I was up for. But I did need that sleep, that's for sure. Hate hot temperatures because once I was rail fanning 80 degrees. Well, you got to put sunscreen on. I've... I rail fanned in Port Huron once. The videos are on my uh, channel uh, when I rail fan Port Huron last year on June 15th. I remember that day. June 15th, 2022. It started when the sun came up. It was already in the 80s. We got up to 99 degrees that day, practically 100. You set out the one sub and when it was 90 degrees and the humidity was 100%. Yeah. And I don't remember what the humidity was on June 15th of last year, but it was hot to the fact that I was wearing shorts. And typically I always, I always, uh, excuse me, I'm yawning. I guess I'm tired or something. I always wear pants most of the time, but that day I was in shorts. Because uh, honestly, believe it or not, I've worked outside at work because I work outside. I've worked outside in 80 degree weather in a hoodie and long pants. I can do it. I can handle it. So, yeah, I, I, I can handle it. I can handle pretty much any kind of weather. So, yeah. Going to film the games at Zap Zone. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've been, I, I apologize for the people that like to watch Pinball Predator. Honestly, with all the train stuff going on and everything that I have to post, I'm, I'm trying the best I can to get some arcade content out there, but I just keep running out of time, so... Uh, I'm going to do the best I can, especially for that channel, get things going. I just got a crap load of crossing tours scheduled out on Royal King of the Rails, and I'm right now in the process of getting a, a train video edited for tomorrow. So do keep that in mind. I've been pretty busy. So I'm, do I'm doing the best I can to get things going for you guys. Um, so, yeah. This weekend, do expect the, uh, the belated... Uh, Daylight savings video of me changing all the clocks back. I don't think I'm going to do it tonight because this room's going to probably be occupied by my parents later on. So I'm not really going to get a chance to do that. So I'll probably end up having to do it either tomorrow or Saturday. Oh, wait, no, I won't be able to do it Saturday because I'll be rail fanning all day. So it'll probably have to come out on Sunday. Well, we'll see Sunday. This week I'm actually going to be pretty busy. Saturday I'm going to be out all day. So... Yeah, and I gotta look as well. Like I said, I'm like I said, coming up here soon, guys. I got a two day trip that I'm gonna be doing, short two day trip, rail fanning trip. It's gonna be coming up soon, uh, and Damon is gonna be helping me out with that. So thank you to Damon if he's still on here for uh, helping me, um, you know, with uh, being able to uh, do this trip because Damon, Damon's my right hand man, and you know, me and him, we love going out to rail fan. We rail fan literally everywhere. And, We'll be doing a midnight rail fanning stream that night, most likely. It's going to be out of out of Michigan. I got to get a hotel, which I got to look into because, uh, like I said, booking hotels when you're under 21 and o older than 18, it's tricky because there's only some certain hotels that will allow you to book them. And some of those hotels, you know, they're great if you can find them in your area, but some other times you can't really find them in your area because they're not as common. Um, so... Okay, let's see where we are at the stream. I'll read the chat real quick. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming on. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We've been live for 45 minutes, so three-quarters of an hour. Got to unbox this awesome Otis Black button elevator part. Absolutely amazing. Glad I was able to snag this because it's pretty cool. 
eventually in the future, because I mean, you guys can see that. I'm literally pulling, I'm about to pull the thing out of the socket, which is not good. So this part's going to need some tune up though, but not, not anything I'm going to be doing anytime soon. Cause I'm just not going to have time. All right. Well, anyway, guys, thanks for uh, coming on and watching uh, tonight's stream. I'll see you guys next time. Anyone want to say anything real quick before we end it? Still got you. Still got it. Yeah, check it out. We got four trains that night. Um, I think we started it off with CNR nine four four. Then we had Amtrak. We had either then Great Lakes Cross. Great, I'm sorry, Great not Great. I was gonna say Great Lakes Crossing Mall. I meant to say Great Lakes Central OSTN that came north. We didn't ever see them go south that day, but they ran north at about 10, a little after ten. And then, okay, yeah, that came second. And then we had Amtrak Blue R 364 that came through that was running about, if I recall that day, they were running an hour and 30 minutes late. And then a few hours after that, we got CNM 301. So check that out if you want to. Uh, that's a good stream. For now, guys, thanks for uh, coming on to the stream. I had a good time talking to you guys. Stay tuned as well. Moderniz modernization video eventually will be coming up like i said once i got i gotta put that video together um and i will i will get that thing going i'm gonna look for a couple other mods in the area if any michigan uh, elevator enthusiasts know of any mods that are going on i do know of one i need to go check up on in ann arbor so i'm gonna check up on that and hopefully it's not too late to get the parts but it's it's been a while it's been probably four months so i'll have to see i might i might have waited too long but we'll have to wait and see what happens um because when I was there, I heard that they were going to redo them, but didn't know when they were going to redo them because they technicians they hadn't started them yet. Uh, Xavier four five six was actually there with me that day when uh, um, we had uh, we had we actually had our first ever elevator enthusiast collab where we had you know a bunch of elevator enthusiasts from Michigan get together in Ann Arbor and we pretty much filmed as much as we could. I filmed like sixty elevators that day. That was a lot of videos, but. That's a story for another time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys next time. And uh, yeah, peace out. Next stream is probably going to be midnight rail fanning. And uh, it'll be out of state. So stay tuned for that. Remember, it'll be on Royal King of the Rails from now on. And I'll send a reminder out on that. Anyway, oh, I just got 10% on my phone. So yeah, this is a good time to end the stream. Thanks for coming on, everybody. I appreciate everyone's support. And for real, we'll see you guys later. Goodbye.